Okay, so in this video series, I am going to be um, basically just going over Destiny Lore, Destiny Lore, and Destiny 2 Lore. I will read all the Destiny Lore, which will take a very lengthy period of time, and then I will read all of Destiny 2 Lore. So, let's begin. So, the first aspect of the Destiny Lore is under the Book of Sorrow category. Books of Sorrow. The Books of Sorrow subsection of the Grimoire covers subjects related to the Books of Sorrow, written by Orcs, the Taken King, and these are unlocked by collecting calcified fragments. So, Aspect 1, or Book 1, Predators. First, 1 out of 1, Predators. Predators and Menaces, carved to endure by X.I. Rowe. Third, Surviving Sister of the Osmium King's Last Brood. Um, so, X.I. Rowe is related to the Osmium King, by the way. A Stormjoy. A Stormjoy is a living cloud. When it passes over our continent, it lowers its fading tentacles. On each tentacle are the bait stars. Although light makes you happy, you must avoid it. Or, although light makes you happy, you must avoid the Stormjoy. You will be eaten. And this is what a Stormjoy is. A storm joy is a good way for an old person to choose death. Also, a daring knight can cut the bait stars from the storm joy's tentacles. I have six bait stars falling. If you fall off the edge of the continent, you will die in the ocean. This is a special hazard. When our father, the Osmium King, uses the engines. Um, and by the way, for the continent, they're talking about this place called the Fundament. So the Fundament is like a planet. Um, anyways, Helium Drinkers. The currents of the Fundament Ocean bring us near other continents. The Helium Quartz is near us. They are of our species, but they are our enemies. The Helium Quartz Knights raid us every day. Helium Drinkers have two legs, two arms, and three eyes, just like us. But the Helium enemies are bright slash evil. I want to be a knight and fight the Helium enemies. The Helium Drinker Ambassador ate ten of my sisters as a tribute. This is normal for the Helium personnel. However, I resent it. <clears throat> mothers. Mothers can fly. They live much longer than ten years. Mothers are extremely smart. And mothers guard their spawn. Or mothers guard their young. If you try to tamper with it, the mother's eggs. The mothers will eat you. Sathona wants to eat the jelly and become a mother when she turns four. Storms. The rain is often poisonous. Sometimes it dissolves flesh. When lightning misses the lightning farm, it can vaporize a person. This entire world is deadly to us. Mysteries. The Fundament, aka like a planet that people live on. The Fundament is very large. We are the smallest things in the Fundament. If you do not understand something, it will probably kill you. 
My teacher, Teox, says this is why we have such short lives. My teacher, Teox, says um, that because we are small and we do not understand something, this is why we have such short lives. So we can breed and adapt quickly. Moon waves. My sister, Arash, is afraid of moon waves. When Arash gets back from her expedition to the tungsten monoliths, I will ask her, aka Arash, why. Why Arash is afraid of moon waves. Alright, so just a reminder, because this is important. Okay, so in this par in this paragraph, there are three names named. There is Arash. So there is Arash right here. Arash, Sathona, and Xiro. So Xiro, Sathona, and Arash. Xiro, Sathona, and Arash are all related. These people are basically the um, heirs or the young, the children of the Osmium King. Anyways, that's kind of important to remember because those names will be talked about a lot. Okay, part two, the hateful verse. Verse one of two, the hateful verse for the consideration of the helium court. Remember, the helium court is related to the helium drinkers, the enemies. Written in desperation, this sealed secret, I am Teox, sterile mother, teacher to the children of the Osmium throne. I am Teox, sterile mother, teacher of the children of the Osmium throne. As a mother, I live long. As a neuter, I can rise above the small battles of court politics. I alone see the patterns of survival. Alone, I designed the great engines that moved the Osmium court. Now, alone, I must act to save my kingdom. Sinality. Um, Sinality has claimed my lord, the Osmium King. He is tin and mad. I guess the Osmium King is the age of tin and mad because of this Sinality. The study of ancient text consumes the Osmium King. Today, the Osmium King raves about moons above the storm. Tomorrow, the Osmium King will wander the halls, speak to his familiar, a dead white worm from the deep sea. The Osmium, key, the Osmium King keeps the familiar, the worm, in class, and he tends to it. And the Osmium King neglects his neglects the duties of being a king. So the Osmium King is likes to study the Osmium King likes to study likes to study ancient texts, but these things consume him because he's just obtaining a bunch of knowledge. And he's worried about the moons above the storm. And the Osmium King has a familiar, a.k.a. a worm, that is special to him. Anyways, the Osmium King has three surviving heirs, each two years old. Each heir two years old. Xiro is the youngest and bravest heir who wants to be a knight. Sedona, another heir, is most clever, who wants to be a mother. Arash, the Arash is an heir, a navigator child, who dreams of the infinite ocean. Tomorrow, Arash.
Ash will return from the tungsten monoliths. None of these are suitable heirs. So these heirs are not suitable according to somebody. None of these are suitable heirs. None of them will protect the Osmium Court from the Howling Fundament. XI Ro can fight, but cannot lead. Sathona can think, but cannot fight. Arash's curiosity will draw her away from study, from duty. Um, these aspects mean that these people are just consumed by the things that they do, too consumed by them, and they'll become distracted. I fear for all children. I fear for all future children. Soon the Osmium King will lock himself into the royal... Soon the Osmium King will lock himself into the royal orrery to study the moons. Gather your knights, O helium drinkers, against the enemies, and invade our continent. Kill the heirs, or kill the three heirs. I will rule the Osmium Court as your regent and build engines for you. And if I fail, let the Leviathan in the deep eat me. Written in grief, this hateful request, Teox. Osmium mother neutered to watch. So, anyways. Part 3, The Oath. First, one out of three, The Oath. Sisters, this is how an oath is done. Put your left hand on the mast, close to mine. Take the knife in your right hand. Push the knife through your left hand, straight between between the bones. Now carve a bloodline down the mast. Speak your oath. Quote, I am Xiro, youngest daughter of the dead Osmium King. I will take back my Osmium court and kill the traitor Teox. Okay, so Teox was a traitor that Remember, Teox was originally a, um, Teox was originally a tutor to the three heirs, but Teox turned evil. So I am Exiro, youngest daughter of the dead king, the Osmium king. I will take back my Osmium court and kill the traitor Teox. On my left eye, I swear vengeance, unquote. In blood, the oath is made. Quote, I am Sathona, middle daughter of the dead Osmium King. I will take back my home and eat the mother jelly. I will raise my spawn on the corpses of the alien, of the helium king, the enemy king. On my right eye, I promise this. Unquote. In blood, the oath is made. Now, I will help make your oath, sister. I will help it, too. I am Arash, first daughter of the dead Osmium King. I will chase my father's last screamed warning. I will know what changed the motion of our moons. If the end of the world is coming, I will understand why. So remember, Arash is, the, is an heir to the Osmium King. Arash, um, our aspect is going to be about discovering something about the moons, like the moon's gravity, causing like some type of end of the world aspect. If the end of the world is coming, I will understand why. On my center eye, I swear it, I will understand. Quote, in blood, the oath is made. In blood, unquote.
thank you, sisters. We have only my ship left to us. But a ship is freedom. We have secrets to hunt, storm-lit realms to explore, and great armies to raise. Put up the lightning sails, and we will vo voyage far. <clears throat> Part 4. Sisigi. I guess that's how you pronounce it. Sisigi. S-Y-Z-G. Something like that. First one of four. Sisigi. The Sisigi. Carved to endure by Arash. In which Arash is the more intellectual one. The high vengeance. Only exile rose. Bait stars. Let us escape. Only exile rose. Bait stars. Let us escape. Only Sathonis tricks. Let us reach the coast. But now that we have my ship, I must lead the way. I am the navigator, as an Arash is the navigator. We may never see our homes again. Ex Iro seethes with hate and fury for Teox, because Teox is a traitor. But this is my deepest fear. Our civilization drifts on the fundament. At the tungsten monoliths, I learned that thousands of other species drift with us, coexisting on a vast world sea. So, Arash learned that thousands of other species drift with us, coexisting on a vast world sea, and the tides of the fundament move us all. The timid truth says that we are the smallest, most fragile things alive, the natural prey of the universe. Teox would have us believe that our ancestors came to the fundament to hide from the hungry void. My father, the Osmium King, died afraid. The Osmium King, did, the Osmium King, did not. Um, my father, the Osmium King, died afraid. The Osmium King did not die because of the vile Teox, or did not die because of the helium drinkers. But the Osmium King died because of his orrery, as in, like, the knowledge that he learned. And the Osmium King liked to lock himself away in his tower to read things. He screamed to me, quote, Arash, my first daughter, the moons are different, the laws are bent, unquote. And he made the sign of a syzygy. Imagine the fifty two moons of fundament lining up in the sky. It would not take all fifty two moons, of course, just a few massive moons. But this is my deepest fear. Imagine the moon's gravity pulling on the fundament sea, lifting. The sea into a swollen into a swollen bulge. So that's what it, that's what he was afraid of the moon's gravity pulling on the fundament sea lifting the sea into a swollen bulge. Imagine that bulge collapsing as he sisigy passed because of the moon's gravity on the fundament a wave forming big enough to swallow civilizations, a god wave. That's what he is afraid of. I have to find a way to stop the god wave before the god wave annihilates my species. If I could only get back into my father's orrery, or if I slash Arash could only get back into my father's library, I could learn exactly when this god wave might happen. 
We are weeks of travel and many continents away from home. When I am paralyzed by fear, X.I. Rowe sits in the cabin with me and comforts me with soft, brave words. But more and more we have come to rely on Sedona's wit. Sedona Seth- will go off to be alone. She insists she must be alone and return with some mad idea. Steer into the storm, throw down a net, eat that strange beast, explore that menacing wreck. Are these mad things that Sedona thinks of or has ideas? Anyways, somehow Sedona seems to manufacture good luck by sheer will. Now, part five, needle and worm. Verse one of five, needle and worm. My secrets carved in my code by Sathona. The right eye vengeance. Okay, I guess this is secret one. This year of wild voyaging. These lightning nights and golden days. These forays into the ancient rigs and windblown flights from monsters. These things are the happiest times of my life. I guess these, I guess these are Sathona's secrets. Sathona's secrets. These are the happiest times of my life. Secret two. I want to be a mother. Not because I want to spawn young, but because I want a long life. Long enough to make a difference. We have been at sea a year, and I am afraid. Afraid we will die out here. Alright, so Sathona also has another secret of becoming a mother. Mainly to live a long life. And um, later on down in the story... Um, you will see that Sathona gets a wish of living a long life. But anyways, secret three. I know where to find secrets. I know where vast, slow things with long memories live. Four, the needle ship. Secret four, the needle ship. The needle, alright, so this is another section. The needle ship. Carved in my code by Sathona, a liar. One, we salvaged the needle ship from the S.H. Fubi Maelstrom. I knew it would be there. Two, the needle. The needle ship is a gray ship. As long and slender as hope, as unbreakable as time and old. Older than death, the ship or the needle ship tumbled through the maelstrom before our ancestors crashed into to the fundament. This is not a sea ship like Harash's ship is. The needle ship is an artifact of high technology. Three, I know the needle ship's purpose. I know what happened to the crew of this natal ship. 4. X.I. Rowe wants to sell the natal ship at Kaharn Atoll, where species gather. At auction, it would. At auction, selling the natal ship would earn us enough wealth to hire mercenaries. We could retake our osmium court and send the baby eating Helium drinkers screaming into the ocean. Five. But I told Xyro the ship was worthless. Do not sell the ship. Six. Arash wants to open the ship and see if we can take command of the natal ship. I know this is the right thing to do. I know because I asked the worm. Alright, so... Not selling the needle 
ship and taking command of the neutral ship is the right thing to do because Arash asked the worm. And remember, the worm is um, the familiar or is like a pet that the Osmium King had. So the worm told Arash something, something important about the ship. The worm carved in my code by Sathona, who should be afraid. One, it was my father's famil familiar. The worm was the familiar to the Osmium King before he died. I ripped the worm slash familiar from the Osmium King as we fled. It is a dead white thing. The familiar is a dead white thing, segmented, washed up from the deep sea. It is dead, but it still speaks to me. It says, listen closely, O oh, vengeance mine. And I will start on this aspect at another on another video. Okay, so I'm going to read about um, two more sections in order to make the video 30 minutes long. Alright, so part six, sisters, verse one of six, sisters, a register of tokens and gestures exchanged before the end of sisterhood, quote, Xiro, my brave sister. You have worked too hard to move the carcasses out of the birthing room. Come, steer the needle ship for a while. Take a joy in what our needle ship can do, unquote. Alright, so, Xiro is also a female, by the way. Xiro is not necessarily a male, but Xiro is a female. Xiro, a female sister tried to protest, but secretly Xiro was so glad for Arash's care. Um, she flew the needle ship in cutting circles. This is Xiro flying the ship down beneath the sea. And, um, and flying the ship in circles. Xiro flew the needle ship in cutting circles. Xiro flew the needle ship in cutting circles down beneath the sea. And the movement of waves, I guess. Oh, okay. Alright, never mind. And their wake rose up to the surface like a trader's dying breath. Quote, Arash, lonely navigator, you have traveled so long with only each other. I know you love to hear thee speak. I know you love to hear and speak new tongues. Come, sit in the flesh garden room. I will read you these stories I bought at Cairn or the place of Gaia at all. Harash sat among the mummified flesh fans with two of her eyes closed and listened in silence to Sathona's stories. Harash hungry on to understand these stories. Um, voracious to know as much as Harash could before. Harash's ten-year life died. Because I can, like remember Arash secretly wants to become a mother. The reason why Arash wants to become a mother is so that Arash can live a long life. Traditionally, Arash's life um, maxes out at ten years, but you know, Arash 
if she, Arash can become a mother, then she can exceed her 10 year lifespan. Anyways, later, Exiro said, quote, Sedona, cutting mind of ours. You grow lonely in your thought, Sedona. Play swords and lanterns with me. Sedona, play swords and lanterns with me, Exiro. But Sedona was heavy with sorrow. And Sedona could not pretend any joy as Sedona chased Exiro through the needle ship's glistening halls. Quote, Sedona, pensive one, what is it? What troubles you? Unquote. Her sisters listened as Sedona said, quote, Oath bearing siblings, we are five years old for two years. We have worked to repair this ancient needle ship and understand its systems. I am almost too old for the mother jelly, as in living a long life. And the and the helium knights who killed our father, the Osmium King, are surely dying of age. Two. And I will not be able to seek vengeance because of old age. Quote, we three will die here in exile. Teox will outlive us all. And Arash, brilliant-eyed Arash, you will die of old age long before you have proof of your god wave or any way to stop the god wave. Unquote. Arash and Exiro looked at each other. Quote, I wish you were not so honest, Sathona. I wish you were not so honest, unquote, Exiro said, and Arash thought that Sedona had never been wrong. In her soul, Arash knew that the only way to keep their oath was to find a great, powerful secret. A secret that could change everything. This was Arash's soul, her fire, and her shadow. Her desire to cut through the flank of the world and to find its beating heart. All right, now something important happens. Quote, we have to dive, Arash said. That is what this needle ship is built to do. The needle ship is to dive into the fundament or to dive deeper into the fundament. The world into the world below us, towards the core of the fundament. Basically, to dive deeper into the core of the fundament. Quote, that is where the ancient crew of the needle ship died so obscenely. The ancient crew of the needle ship supposedly died in the core of the fundament. Exiro protested. This response, that is where the atrocity in the birthing room was born. Or Exiro protested, but then um, Arash said that is where the atrocity in the birthing room was born. Quote, we have to dive, Sedona said, following the whispers of her familiar. Quote, in the world beneath us, in the metallic depths. I hope we find what we need most, unquote. More time, more life. <clears throat> Part 7, The Dive. Verse 1 of 7, The Dive. For life, Sathona dove. For vengeance, Exiro dove. And Arash dove to understand. Because Arash is the more intellectual. The needle ship is pierced, or the needle ship pierced the skin of the world, aka the fundament, and burrowed deep through layers of foam and metal and cold elemental slush. Ara 
crash devoured the ship's maps of fundament. From the high angelic cloud decks, down and down through the storms and oceans and plates of floating world, into the crush of the core. They met monsters of continental scope while they dove, vast anemones that raised glowing tentacles to bait them in to a trap. Exiro flew the needle ship through the monsters, and the needle ship's crew bled black, or and the monsters bled black carbon jelly and frost. Finally, they came to a still place beneath a plate of metal. Quote, I will use the sensors of the ship, whispered Arash. Listen. In the wet, gold, dark of the elm, they listened to the needle ship, and the ship listened to the crushing motions of fundament. They heard the they heard the collision of continents. Remember, they are now down in the um, exile row. Arash and Sedona are now down in the core of the fundament, and they can hear um, basically the insides of the fundament. Like, and the ship listened to the crushing motions of fundament. While the biggest air in the in the core, they heard the collision of continents. They heard the patter and the crush and the crash of helium neon rain. <clears throat> they heard the struggles of monsters, and they heard the distant groan of the ocean rising. The ocean rising tugged by distant moons or the moon's gravity. And because of this, this is the response quote, the syzygy is real. Sathona is, it is already begun, as in the moon's gravity on the waves to form the god wave has already begun. Behind them, Exiro thought of the birthing room where ancient explorers had labored over surgeries and administrations, peeling back the chrysalis and the coal of what? Peeling back the chrysalis and the call of that which they had made from the deep, whose birth none of them would survive. Quote, there is something down here. So being in the core, they found somebody said that there is something down here in the core, she whispered. Something secret. And this is the secret that they found. The Leviathan. And the Leviathan loomed over them. Its brow as huge as all the continents of their childhood. It, it, its great array fins crackling with the lightning of its life. Booming into the hole of the needle ship in a microwave voice. So this is what the Leviathan says. You must turn back. Save yourselves from the deep. Save the world from yourselves. You must turn back. Okay, I am ending it there. The next episode, I will be on this part.